It's that time of year, everybody. A time for appreciation. When you can tell your dishwasher just how entirely grateful you are for all the hard work that it does every single day. Bust out that champagne, pour yourself a glass, and buy that bitch some Cascade so that she can clean off your champagne flute. Because as we all are aware, it ain't gonna clean itself. Begin. Happy Women's History Month, everybody. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I happen to be a female. Um, despite my jarringly masculine tendencies to fart on occasion, and dare I say it, be funny. <laughs> okay, okay, that's enough. Let's not get too carried away. Anyway, it's Women's History Month, and I thought we'd do some edumacating on the issue of... It. Let's revisit the wizened old mustachioed tavern broad that refuses to kick the bucket, feminism. USA Today released an article on the subject and so I thought that we'd use that as our starting point for our crash course in feministism. Like any ism, feminism is rich with jargon, which can lead deeply personal conversations to turn unnecessarily dense. Well, that's one way of putting it. Here are definitions for everything from feminism and misogyny to appropriated and feminazi. Feminism, the belief in and desire for equality between the sexes. Nothing new here, but the next part is very interesting, viewer. Of course, a lot of people tweak the definition to make it their own. Note that this is supposed to be the basics of feminism. And if this is supposed to be the basics of feminism, why does it have to be so muddled and individualized adjustments with complications up the wazoo? Why? Just why? We can't even decide on a concise definition for what it is that feminism is. And we're not even through the basics yet. And then of course we have our normal other definitions found in gender studies for patriarchy, misogyny, and misandry, but if you, if you look at this one here, all right? Sexism, that one's a rather peculiar one. It says that sexism is the idea that women are inferior to men. Hmm! There's something, there's something that, that's, there's something about this that I can't, I can't quite my, put my, put my finger on. It's just, there's something, it's giving me pause, all right? And, and it, you know what, hang on, it must not, <laughs> It must not be anything quite that significant. I mean, it's only nagging at me a little bit, and nothing, nothing that's ever nagged in the history of anything has ever been of any importance, let's be honest. So we dig a little deeper, making a distinction between regular sexism and hostile sexism, benevolent sexism and internalized sexism, which is something that I'm definitely not guilty of in any capacity. <laughs> because further breakdown of things into smaller and less generalized things is uh, always, well, always <laughs> conducive of optimal vocabulary management. Who needs concision when you can be as specific as humanly possible regardless of if it's necessary or not? This is of the utmost importance. Let me explain why. Because the people who pursue this path in academia, they need to be able to fill pages upon pages of books upon books about the gender theory 
that they have studied so long and hard about in order to make a profit. You see, it cannot be done simply if everything in actuality only fills about three quarters of a page in terms of information that's usable and, dare I say it, necessary. <laughs> so essentially we delve into what I like to call word padding. Get it? Period joke. Since we're talking about feminism. Ay! Please laugh. And now we come to the intersectional portion of this discussion. Words such as misogynure, which is misogyny directed at black women, uh, because of, you know, all of the racial intersections to pick out of the proverbial progressive stack of never-ending accommodations that need to be made. That had to, that was the one, that was the single one that made the cut. The rest did not. As, as, as someone who is one 1,024th Cherokee Indian on my adoptive mother's side, I find that highly discriminatory. Uh, where's my feminism? In addition to racial intersectionality and feminist theory, we also have the LGBTQ intersectionality. Intersectionality. There we go. Words. And it is a two, three, four, five. We can't forget about the non-intersectional sections of feministisms. Six, seven-fold thing of just, just, just all of, all of, all of the LGBT terms need to be included in feminism theory, apparently, for whatever reason, because intersectionality. Of course, it's worth mentioning the thing that protects people from discrimination based on sex and educational programs and or activities that receive federal financial assistance, which uh, ironically, ironically achieves this by targeting people based on their sex and educational programs and activities. You might be thinking that I'm joking about this or that I'm just trolling for the sake of trolling because trolling on the internet is popular, but I am not. I have an entire, an entire series dedicated to highlighting this kind of thing. You should check it out. Hashtag everything is sexist. We're talking about how hashtag everything is sexist. And then we have what I like to call self-responsibility shaming, followed up by a self-tailored WebMD co-opted veteran experience DLC with expansion pack and taking off the rare because I've, I've, I've never seen a generation more anal about consent in my life, the death of the millennial sex drive. <laughs> my, what a bright future I see on the horizon. Then, thank God I grabbed these for that last bit because we're gonna need these for this next section, the male gaze, which sounds like something harmless but is in fact actually indicative of said males being pigs by default because, you know, males. It's not male toxic gaze or male harmful gaze. It's male gaze. Simply the male gaze. I know. And then we have that thing that only white toilet seat complexion cis straight hetero zucchini owning male individuals of ex exacerbated age can have. And obviously I'm talking about CEO positions, not privilege. <laughs> The thing that you hope is never the case while you're sitting on a Walmart toilet seat waiting for the test results to come back. Sex positively. Positive, positively. Which is a sin against God, by the way. You should know that. But wait! There's more! Jargon. Bro appropriating. <laughs> Say that one five times fast. Bro appropriating. Bro appropriating. Bro appropriating. Bro appropriating. Bro appropriating. Actually, it's not that hard. I did it. <sighs> and then mansplaining, which is what I happen to be doing right now. And man interrupting. You know, I'm. <laughs> uh, basically, I'm. Uh, I'm guilty of this from time to time. Basically, I'm. Uh, first of all, basically, I'm. I have a tendency to talk over people when I am trying Basically, to make I'm a, I'm a point, a, and if I'm said a, person a, is you know, first of all, <laughs> wasting a, my time with a plethora of I'm nonsense, it, of all, then, well, <laughs> it really grinds my gears, and I'll just- I'll SPURN OVER THAT! The true villain of our day, obviously, the AIDS epidemic facing our generation, the decades long boogeyman, RY2K. Men spreading. 
Then we have an antonym for sleep and a synonym for a gentleman's morning wood. Get it? He just woke up and so did his didgeridoo. And that's sexist because his didgeridoo is awake and male sexuality is objectification of women. And sexism. Get it? Get it? Please laugh. I've ruined any chance I have at having a normal job. And uh, YouTube's all I got, people. You please, please laugh. <laughs> <laughs> These next two I'm not quite familiar with. A misogynist. <laughs> Zach Braff in Garden State, according to Jezebel, he's emotional, full of angst, and seems like a feminist, but what he really wants is a real-life manic pixie dream girl to manipulate and eventually discard after he finds himself. Wow, that's specific. <laughs> and Wimpster, Lloyd Dobler in Say Anything, a white, white, <laughs> a white, wimpy emo guy who uses his male insecurity to prey on women who want to nurture? These are oddly specific instances, and... From what I can tell, they come from movies. <laughs> Literally, who uses either of these? Who? I spend the entirety of my life on the internet, and I've never heard of either of these. Of course, then we have feminists. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, feminazi, a derogatory term for a radical feminist. Um, <sighs> to which I ask, is it derogatory if it's accurate, though? Is it? Is it derogatory? Is it really? And that's the end of this section. Do I have to continue? Really? But I'm running out of funnies. <laughs> okay. Fine. Moving on to types of feminism, did you know that there was more than one? Well, of course, we have intersectional feminism, which is different from regular feminism because it's inclusive of all of everybody else. It's supposed to be that umbrella feminism that includes everybody, but if that were the case, then we wouldn't need trans feminism feminism or women of color feminism feminism. <laughs> Who can forget? Womanism feminism, which is just women of color feminism, but exclusively for Africana women's culture. And then there's... And then there's empowerment feminism, because, you know, the, the suffragettes were shit out of luck finding a movement, a name for a movement, to empower them women folk with, right? There's no tea in here. But pretend there is. Commodity feminism, what the hell is that? A variety of feminism that co-ops the movement's ideals for profit. Ivanka Trump has been accused of peddling this brand of feminism using her hashtag women who work campaign to sell her employments, life, employ, eponymous, 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 lifestyle brand. Words, what is that? Okay, so capitalism. What? <laughs> Was that necessary? And finally, equity feminism, which is just bracketed as conservative feminism. <clears throat> Christina Hoff Summers, a resident scholar at the Conservative America Enterprise Institute, is a champion of what she calls equity feminism. In her view, equity feminism is focused on legal equality between men and women, while gender feminism focuses on disempowering women by portraying them as perpetual victims of the patriarchy. In the words of President Trump's advisor, Kellyanne Conway, I look at myself as the product of my choices, not a victim of my circumstances. And that's really, to me, what conservative feminism, if you will, is all about. Now, as far as feminism-isms go, uh, that seems like the one that makes the most sense, quite frankly. I mean, just do that. That's good. Do, keep it. And lastly, the article covers the three waves of feminism, which I can sum up quite simply, actually. The first wave, the beginning of the end. Second wave, a footnote in world history. The third wave, a mistake that has yet to be corrected. Thank you for your time. I'm here all week. You know, women can be funny. I appreciate that. Yes, I am funnier than Amy Schumer. Oh, thank you. No, please. Just, <laughs> thank you. Try the veal. Tip your waitresses. Bitch out.
If you like what I'm doing here, feel free to check out the links in the description to my Amazon, Subscribe Star, Patreon, PayPal, and the link to my Redbubble store where you can find unique exclusive Weebo merchandise. My P.O. box can also be found below if you'd like to send me stuff in the mail. Also, please consider leaving a like, a comment, sharing the video, and subscribing to the bell for more. If you want to see more of me in a different capacity, I have a second channel called Weebo Incognito dedicated to ripping apart all things entertainment. I do a LARP comedy stream show called Side Quest over on Magog of Morskar's live stream channel, and I do a bi-weekly stream show called Two Girls One Stream with segments for news, advice, Collins, fanfiction read-throughs, and more on some dumb Americans channel. Links to all that jazz down in the description down below. So, guess what time it is? Hey, it's package opening time. So I only have two today. Only have two today. I have two today. <laughs> I don't expect everyone to get me things every single week, but it's always a nice time when that does happen. So I've been expecting this film for quite some time. And uh, <clears throat> I will read the note before I continue on. Hello, Miss Weibo. I hope you enjoy this palette cleanser. Please share with Miss SDA as required. May I ask to be titled Assassin of the Grey on the round <laughs> on the round hammer discord in place of night. All the best, James. I can see about working something out. Actually, I think I can change your nickname directly. I'll do that. I'll do that in a minute after I opened up the second package, which I'm excited about because I know what both of these were before I actually open them uh, because people have been spoiling my my fun half the fun guys is in not knowing what I'm getting I, I, you, you should you should be aware of that but I do know what this one is and I'm actually a little bit excited a little bit I'm very excited <coughs> oh my gosh and I love it when you guys send me notes yes. two notes Oh, was this supposed to... Oh, no. Was this supposed to go to Beardy? I have one for Weebo and one for Beardy. Okay. I'll see what I... Okay, hang on. Let me read the note. Let me let me see. I don't know if you guys know this, but I don't live with Beardy. He lives in Canada. I don't live in Canada. I like the stationery, though. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't this cool? Oh. I love it when you guys send me notes. I hope you enjoyed my stories as much as I enjoy you on side quests. Yolandi, and then there's an email here. Alright. Cool. Saving this. Um. I guess. Yeah, no, I'll have to send this. I'll have to forward this one to Beardy. Because this one's. This one's, uh. I guess written for Beardy. And I'll read this. Maybe. Uh, I don't know what I'll do with this yet. Maybe I'll read it on stream, maybe not. Hmm, we'll see. But I'm excited. I can get it framed. I can get a nice, like, one of those little, what do you call it? It's, um, they're like paper holders. <laughs> they're professional things for holding paper. That's what we'll call them. I'll get one of those things, and we'll put it in there. Anyway, thank you so much. Peace.